Fu Xingying lifted his glasses and observed the close-up shot of Fu Hanjing's face on the cell phone. The wound on his lips was indeed clear. Are you sure that it is a girlfriend your brother has found? Do you expect that my brother has found a boyfriend instead? Fu Shiqin was startled by his father's idea. He said seriously, it is a girlfriend. A very pretty one. Fu Xingying nodded. Good, as long as she is not the daughter from the Gu family, anyone else would be fine. Mrs. Fu threw a look at her husband and said with a serious expression. The daughter from the Gu family would not work, nor would Mu Weiwei. Fu Shiqin felt his forehead. Mu Weiwei was exactly the girl his brother had eyes upon. She was just about to say something when his cell phone rang again. He answered the call with full courtesy when he saw the name on the screen. Brother, what are your orders? How is her cold? Fu Hanjing said in a low voice. He did not sound happy. I did not see her, how would I know about it? Go and check on her now. Fu Hanjing said with a cold voice. My dearest brother, it is almost midnight. Why don't you call her if you want to know about her so badly? On the other side of the phone, Fu Hanjing stayed silent for a minute before saying, she blocked me. Fu Shiqin was startled for a few seconds before spilling out his mouthful of rice. He tried very hard to restrain his laughter after swallowing down some water. Then call the home phone. She must be at home by now. Another moment of silence before he said, the cable was pulled away. Fu Shiqin had his hands over the cell phone and laughed so hard at what had happened. So this was now the time when his brother would experience suffering. Why did his brother's helpless tone sound so pleasing? Fu Shiqin, be aware of your laughter Fu Hanjing warned with a cold voice. Although he did not hear the voice, he could tell instantly what Fu Shiqin was doing at that moment. Fu Shiqin cleared his throat and stopped laughing. Well, it is too late tonight, I will help you check on her tomorrow. Why had he not noticed that the situation between Mu Weiwei and her brother was so much fun before? Okay. Fu Hanjing answered briefly and hung up the phone. Fu Shiqin put down the cell phone and said to his parents, See? See? Brother even calls to see if she is getting better from her cold even when he is abroad. Who else has received such treatment in our family before? A cold? Mrs. Fu thought of Mu Weiwei who she had met at the club today. It seemed that when she spoke she sounded like she was suffering from a cold. But as soon she got this idea, she kicked it out of her head. It couldn't have been her. Hanjing hated her so much before and her son would definitely have laid eyes upon anyone else apart from that annoying girl. Fu Xingying folded the newspaper and asked curiously, where is the girl from? Didn't your brother tell you when he will bring her home for us to take a look? Fu Shiqin threw a look at Mrs. Fu who did not like Mu Weiwei, and realized that if she knew the truth, she might do something about it. So it would be best for his brother to tell them himself. Brother has not successfully won her yet. But my brother is very effective, so I am sure that he will bring her home for you to assess her. Maybe you will get a grandson next year. His brother never hesitated once he made up his mind. As long as he made the decision, he would complete the goal no matter what. Therefore, no matter how much Mu Weiwei tried to struggle, she would always end up being captured by his brother. Come here, Shirchin. Old lady stood up and left the dining room. Fu Shirchin followed up obediently, Grandma, what is it that is so secret that you want me away from the dining room? Old lady took a look around and whispered when she was certain that no one was nearby. The girl you talked about must be Weiwei, right? Fu Shiqin nodded vigorously. Grandma, you have a pair of eyes that can see truth, you are observant and you are so smart. Old lady smiled, feeling gratified as she said proudly, I knew that I had spotted the right girl. In order to move out before Fu Hanjing came back home on business, Gu Weiwei left Ji Cheng's home and went out to check different apartments. She was so busy that she was never at home. Therefore, although Fu Shiqin visited the apartment three times, he missed her every single time. However, all of her hard work paid off. She finally found a small apartment, which was as small as the bathroom in Jinxiu compound, yet it was still enough for her to live alone in. She spoke with the landlord, signed the lease contract, paid the down payment and was about to go home to move her things when Ji Qing called her and asked her to meet up with her. They happened to be in the neighborhood, so she went over, straight to them. I just bought tickets for a musical, let's all go and watch the show. Ji Qing showed off the tickets she had bought. But I am still busy. Gu Weiwei said in embarrassment. She had to go and pack up her things before moving. She was not in the mood to watch a musical. You have stood us up so many times, just watch one musical with us, alright? Ji Qing pursed her lips, looking displeased. Gu Weiwei let out a sigh of helplessness. Alright, I... 
Her packing was mostly done anyways and all she had left to pack were a few small things. Fu Hanjin would not return until tomorrow night, so even if she moved away the following morning, she would still miss him. The three of them arrived at the theater half an hour before the show started and the audience members in other seats started to sit down as well. Ming Yi, who was dressed in a casual outfit, was a bit startled at the sight of them. Then he showed a polite smile to them. Wei Wei, Qian Qian, you are here too. Oh cousin, what a coincidence. You are here for a show too. Ji Qing waved to him with a smile whilst glancing at Gu Wei Wei carefully. Gu Wei Wei waved to him with a dry smile. She had sensed that this little girl must have been up to something, but she was still fooled. And this unlucky brother must have thought that Ji Qing had asked him to watch the show alone, that was why he had agreed to come. As a result, however, he was framed and pushed into having a date with someone else. Half an hour after the show had started, Ji Qing and Luo Qianqian took off. Gu Weiwei threw a sympathetic look at Mingyi sitting next to her. You better tell her the truth as soon as possible, otherwise she is going to keep hooking us up like a fool. Mingyi let out a sigh of helplessness. True. I really need to find an opportunity to tell her the truth. Otherwise, the silly girl would be constantly engaged in setting him up with a girl. After Ji Qing left, Gu Weiwei and Mingyi decided to leave as well. It is difficult to call a taxi at this time. I can drive you home. She was Ji Cheng's friend after all. If he did not drive her home, that girl would blame him. Gu Weiwei was just about to wonder if she should get in the car when Fu Shi Qin, together with a very sexy girl, passed by and let out a cry of surprise when he saw her. Mu Weiwei? What are you doing here? Gu Weiwei frowned. A terrible feeling hit her. I am on a date. Fu Shi Qin took a hold of the girl next to him and said, We are on our way back, what about giving you a lift? Gu Weiwei had not wanted to trouble Mingyi, so she agreed to get in his car instantly and waved goodbye to Mingyi. Mingyi did not force her either, so he said with a smile when he saw Fu Shi Qin going to fetch the car. You are Cheng's friend, and you are mine too. Nice to meet you. Me too. Gu Weiwei nodded with a smile and said, wish your little angel will understand your heart as soon as possible. Mingyi stretched out his hands. Thank you for your blessing. Gu Weiwei was about to stretch out her hand to hold his when Fu Shi Qin pressed the horn, urging her to hurry up. She waved goodbye to Mingyi in a hurry, jogged over to the side of the car and pulled open the door before taking a seat inside. It was not until that moment did she realize that the person who was sitting next to her in their seat was not Fu Shi Qin's date, but Fu Hanjing who was giving out a horrifying cold air. Gu Weiwei was startled for two seconds and then immediately tried to open the door to get out of the car when she realized what was happening. But Fu Shi Qin had locked the door ahead of time. Fu Shi Qin, you goddamn bastard. If he had appeared alone, she would really have suspected that Fu Hanjing was back. But he had a woman with him. That was why she believed that he was on a date and just so happened to run into her. That is none of my business. My brother asked me to get you into the car. Fu Shi Qin said innocently as he drove the car. This man, who had been supposed to return the next day, returned in fury when he knew that she was on a blind date with someone. So the moment he got off the plane, he came to the theater straight away. However, what he had run into was Mu Weiwei and Mingyi talking with each other happily as they walked out of the theater. In order to get her into the car, he had already tried his best to put on a show. Not being able to open the door, Gu Weiwei gave up and glanced at the man who had his eyes sunken to the lowest degree. Aren't you supposed to return tomorrow instead? Fu Hanjing subtly tilted his head and stared at her eyebrow for a few seconds. Are you satisfied with your blind date? Gu Weiwei puckered her lips in silence. Are you having fun on the date? Fu Hanjing sounded even colder. He was sparing time and space for her so that she could consider the relationship between the two of them. Yet she took the opportunity of him being away and had a blind date with someone else. They even watched a musical today. Gu Weiwei shrank her neck into her shoulders, feeling as if she had been caught right in the middle of an affair. Fu Shi Qin, who was driving the car, felt a snow mountain sitting right behind his back. One that gave out such cold air that he could not even hold the steering wheel steadily. So when Mu Weiwei was missing for two days and refusing to answer his calls, she was busy going on a blind date with someone else. That was irritating. No wonder his brother flew home ahead of time, he came to catch her in the act after he got off the plane, even before he visited home. Fu Hanjin was waiting for her explanation, but Gu Weiwei turned her head around to watch the night scenery outside the car window refusing to explain a thing. The air inside the car was full of heavy pressure. Fu Shi Qin drove the car into the parking lot of Jinxiu compound, got off the car to take a breath. 
Then he threw a glance at Gu Weiwei, suggesting that she should explain calmly to his brother at home rather than having a quarrel with him, as that would only bring her more trouble. Gu Weiwei still did not want to explain anything. She went into her room and started to pack up the remaining luggage. She said to Fu Hanjin with luggage as she came into the living room, Thank you for taking care of me recently. I have found a place to live. Fu Hanjing had no expression on his face as he raised his hands to check the Patek Philippe watch around his wrist. He took a seat on the sofa, exuding complete calmness and showed no movement to stop her from leaving. Gu Weiwei took off with her luggage when she saw that he didn't stop her. But before she was able to make it to the door, her cell phone rang. She scooped out the phone and found that it was her new landlord. The moment the call went through, the landlord could not wait and instead burst out saying, Mississippi Moo, I am sorry, but my apartment has just been sold. It is said that the compound is going to be demolished so a mall can be built. I am afraid that I can't rent it to you. I will pay you double the down payment that you gave me. Fu Shuqin noticed the exact moment when the expression on Gu Weiwei's face changed from the spot where he stood. It seemed that Su Qian had completed the mission. It was completely normal that someone would demolish apartments to build a mall when he was in a bad mood. Gu Weiwei pursed her lips and hung up the phone. She then returned to the living room. Did you get someone to stalk me? It might have been Mrs. Fu who had told him about her visiting the banquet at the Ming family and the meeting with Ming Yi. But the reason behind him knowing that she checked out the apartment and rented the apartment must have been a result of him having her stopped. So the reason why he checked the time was because he had known that the landlord would call her at this hour. Fu Hanjing's dark, deep eyes were full of mist. He picked up the water that Fu Shuqin had poured for him and said nonchalantly, Wang Weidong and his men are trying to catch you. Gu Weiwei became startled. No wonder Wang Weidong and Zhou Meiqin had not come to her. Especially after she had set them up the last time. She had been cautious when going out these days, fearing that the Li family or Wang Weidong would bring her trouble. But she had never seen anyone suspicious, nor had she discovered Wang Weidong's men or someone who stalked her. It seemed that his men had not only removed Wang Weidong's men but also turned out to be too skillful for her to notice them. She stayed in silence for a long time and threw a look at Fu Shuqin who was trying hard to conceal himself. Can you leave us alone? Fu Shuqin dashed off without another word. It was too scary at home and he was better off running away quickly so as to keep himself safe. After the door was closed, deadly silence dominated the room. Gu Weiwei took a deep breath, came over to the sofa and looked directly into the man's profound eyes. Fu Hanjing, I am sorry that I pestered you before, but I am very tired now. I have got nothing left and what I want is to live a quiet life on my own. Fu Hanjing's face softened somehow when he saw the agony below the girl's eyes. From now on, you have me. I can give you anything you want, and I can help you get back anything you want to get back. Had it not been her purpose when she tried to approach him at the beginning? And now when he wanted to give her whatever she had dreamt about, what made her turn him down? Gu Weiwei smiled and said with determination. But I do not want it. I do not want you or anything from you. She had been brought back to the Gu family to live by Mother Gu when her own mother passed away because of sickness when she was one years old. Gu Siding had been her dearest brother and used to be the man she once loved the deepest. He dominated her world, yet he scooped out her heart for Ling Yen, showing no condolences to her when she died. He had given her the most luxurious life for more than two decades, yet he had tossed her into the coldest and most isolated basement. Fu Hanjing talked with her in this way because he did not know that she was actually not Mu Weiwei. And would he still say the same thing, after he knew that she was Gu Weiwei, the offspring of the worst enemy of the Fu family? When that time came, he might kill her too. She could not irritate him, so she wanted to stay away from him so that she could realize her wish of this second chance life. So, you are thinking about leaving after you have irritated me? Fu Hanjing looked profound. Gu Weiwei was in a very awkward position. It had been Mu Weiwei who had irritated him, yet she was the one who had to answer for the consequences. All right, she could accept the truth. Since she lived on in someone else's body, she had to pay the price. She took a deep breath, removed her overcoat and the t-shirt underneath. Then she removed her jeans until she only had her underwear left on. The girl's tender skin looked very white and moist under the lights, and her slender and pretty body shape was exposed to the man. As Fu Hanjing watched what she was doing, his eyebrows frowned and lips puckered. Gu Weiwei approached him, straddled his legs and started to untie his well-made tie. What are you doing? Fu Hanjing's voice sounded cold to the deepest degree. Gu Weiwei had already untied his tie and tossed it onto the ground. Then she continued to unbutton his shirt. 
What you want, after all, is to sleep with me, right? Fu Hanjing grabbed a hold of her hand to stop her from doing anything further. Gu Weiwei looked up at him. How many times do we have to have s asterisk x before you can let me go? Five times, or maybe ten? It must have been because of the night they spent together, so that he, whose virginity had been broken, had started to show interest in her body. Fu Hanjing released her hand slowly and lifted her chin gently with his long fingers. He slightly opened his thin lips to meet the lustful lips of the girls. Then they were tangled. In the silent living room, the sound of panting arose, and the air started to become thick with lust. The bossy air of the man invaded all of her senses as if it wanted to be blended with her soul. The kiss was so violent that her tongue became completely numb. Involuntarily, she had already been pushed onto the sofa and ended up being under his body. The moist lips released her red lips and covered her eyebrows, eyes, and the tip of her nose in such a gentle way that it felt like he was facing the most precious treasure in the world. She rebelled by turning herself away as the man took a soft bite of her small earlobe. His soft lips rubbed against her cheek as his low yet clear voice entered her ears, You want me to leave after five or ten times? Gu Weiwei snorted as she said to Fu Hanjing who was so close to her at that moment in time, So what? You want me to be your long-term product? The man's eyes, which were always calm and cold, withdrew all of the chilliness and showcased extreme gentleness, just like a refined wine that made people drunk. Mu Weiwei, what I want is, a lifetime. A lifetime is too long. I will be fed up even if you are not. Gu Weiwei turned away, trying not to meet his eyes. Fu Hanjing lowered his eyes, looking a bit annoyed. Three years then. You give me a house, a car, and money. I can be your mistress. Gu Weiwei continued, ignoring the fury inside his eyes. Fu Hanjing said one word after another as he looked at her. That is not what I want. Then what do you want? Gu Weiwei snorted and asked with a cold smile. You want me to like you and fall for you? Fu Hanjing said, you can't? You drove me out of the Fu family and now you want me back when I am gone? Gu Weiwei snorted and said, Sorry, I am too far away to return. Fu Hanjing had no words to reply to her. It was true that he had driven her out of his home and now he wanted her back again. It must have been the first time in his life to run into such a conflicting situation. Gu Weiwei shrank her shoulders impatiently and urged, If you want to have s asterisk x with me, hurry up. I feel cold without clothes on. Having said those words, Fu Hanjing picked her up and walked into her room. Gu Weiwei clenched her teeth. Although she taken off her own clothes and bragged that she was open for the s asterisk x with him, when the time really came, she somehow felt like being a coward. After all, Mu Weiwei had slept with him, she had not. Even though she had some feelings for Gu Siding, yet Mother Gu and the Gu family were always with them. So what they had done was only kissing and hugging each other, nothing more. Therefore, she had no experience in s asterisk x. Fu Hanjing put her onto the bed and then dragged the blanket up over her to cover her up so that only her head was showing. Weiwei, you better not challenge my patience again and again. Gu Weiwei blinked. So he was not going to sleep with her? Don't let me see you being involved with any other men. Having said those words, Fu Hanjing stood up and left. Gu Weiwei let out a sigh of relief when she heard the door open and then close again. What was this man thinking? She had stripped herself down to her underwear and he had also gotten hard, but he chose to leave her alone in bed and left? In the underground parking lot of the compound, Fu Shuqin was just wondering if he should leave or go up and check what was going on in the apartment. It was at this moment when he saw Fu Hanjing coming towards him from the exit of the elevator. He had no coat on him and his tie was missing. The buttons of his collar were also open. Instead of being cold and serious as he usually was, he looked sexy and unsatisfied. Fu Hanjing sat back in the back of the car and said, let's go back to the villa. Fu Shuqin turned around and saw the man sitting in the back seat who had been neatly dressed before he entered the apartment. Something must have happened inside for him to come out in this way. But if they had really slept with each other, his brother would not have finished it within half an hour. That was too fast. Drive. Now. Fu Hanjing leaned against the back seat, looking a bit tired because of the long trip. Fu Shuqin took his role as a driver obediently as he, every now and then, surveyed the man behind him through the rear mirror. Brother, are you really, serious about Mu Weiwei? He had thought that his brother was just interested in Mu Weiwei physically, but judging from what happened today, it seemed that he had more to offer. Could it be that his heart was taken away this time? Yes. Fu Hanjing answered briefly. At the beginning, he had thought that it was her body that he desired after they slept with each other that night. 
but gradually, he realized that he wanted more than her body. He had not had a single feeling towards her when she lived at the Fu family during those many months. But after she left Landscape Villa the other day and he met her again, a crazy thought had appeared in the deepest corner of his heart and a voice seemed to be telling him that the woman he had been waiting for had arrived. Fu Shuqin threw a look at him through the rear mirror. Then, what are you doing down here? What he meant to say was, look at how you are dressed now. What is the point of returning to Landscape Villa? She does not like me. Fu Hanjing said. That is impossible. When she saw you before, she was like a dog that spotted fresh meat. Fu Shuqin did not believe him. The reason why she was turning a cold shoulder to his brother was because she was trying to leave him at large so as to catch him easily later on. And so far she had succeeded in doing that. Fu Hanjing opened his eyes and looked at the nighttime scenery outside the car window. That's true. He could tell from the look in her eyes that she really was not into him. And he even felt that she was, in love with a man he did not know. Fu Shuqin wanted very much to spill out and say something as he looked at his own brother through the rear mirror. My brother, you drove her out and now you want her back so she can love you. Is it really okay for you to behave in this way? When they returned to Landscape Villa, it was already very late. Fu Hanjing went to take a rest in the bedroom. Fu Shuqin showered and laid down in bed when his phone vibrated. He picked it up and saw that it was a message from Fu Shi. She, Dad said that our brother has got a girlfriend when I called him just now. She, is that true? Fu Shuqin thought for a second and realized that Fu Shi was the most experienced person in the entire family regarding girlfriends. So he asked, but that girl doesn't like our brother. What do you think he should do? She, is there any woman who doesn't like a man like our brother? Which planet is she from? Fu Shuqin, leave all the useless things out, tell me, how should we help our brother get the girl? She, how should I know about it? Fu Shuqin, you have so many girlfriends, how do you have no idea on how to court a girl? She, those girls court me. Fu Shuqin, get out of here. She, tell me what is going on. Fu Shuqin decided to cut the long story short, so he used a voice message to briefly explain what was going on between his brother and Mu Weiwei. She, so her mind changed after that night? She, underscore, that is obvious. She is not satisfied with what our brother did that night. You know, our brother had not used his spear for so many years and it has rusted. Fu Shuqin, that is what I have suspected too. Monster, is that so? Fu Shuqin was so frightened that he dropped his phone. He picked up the phone again and found that he had been talking with Fu Shi on a group chat with three members. Himself, Fu Shi, and Fu Hanjing who was nicknamed Monster. For some reason, the entire villa was filled with an air of killing intent. Fu Shuqin instantly made a call to Fu Shi and said with a small voice, What is wrong with you? Why did you start the chat in the group? Fu Shi said, My life is very important, so I have decided not to go home after filming. Brother, take care. Third brother. You started it. Fu Shuqin bellowed furiously. They were twins, but he was the one that worked day and night in the company whilst his brother was in the entertainment industry being a superstar, living a leisurely life. But that was what you thought too, wasn't it? Fu Shi said when he thought of that pitiful brother of theirs. What about you sucking up to our future sister-in-law, if our brother really likes her, she is the only one that can save you. You want me to be the scapegoat again? Second brother, fighting. Having said those words, Fu Shi hung up the phone and switched it off. Fu Shuqin was so annoyed that he almost smashed his phone. The biggest misfortune he had, had in his life was to be born one minute before Fu Shi. This boy had always made him his scapegoat just because he claimed himself as being a little younger. Throughout the entire night, he stared at the single-sentence monster wrote in the group. For some reason, he felt that he would not be able to see the sun the next day. Therefore, he drove straight to Jinxiu compound the moment dawn arose. Gu Weiwei, who had not slept well, opened the door drowsily. Fu Shuqin placed one bag after another of things onto the table after he entered the apartment. Steamed dumplings and seafood porridge from Dingfenjiwen, freshly squeezed fruit and the present my brother has brought back for you. I am delivering it on the behalf of my brother. Gu Weiwei lost her desire to sleep. She crossed her arms over her chest and looked at this man who was trying to suck up to her so early in the morning. What do you want? Fu Shuqin closed his hands and almost went down on the floor to kowtow to her. Please, save my life. Gu Weiwei froed. What on earth is going on? Fu Shuqin smiled. My brother was not very happy when he went home last night. Could you please have a date with him? The fundamental thing was that she was found attending a musical with another man. 
Gu Weiwei said, Sorry, I do not have time. What relationship did she have with Fu Hanjin so that she must go on a date with him? Fu Shiqin put down the exquisitely packed present and said, See, my brother remembered you and bought you a present. Can you have a conscience? Sorry, I really do not have a conscience. Gu Weiwei snorted. If you do not agree with me, don't eat the breakfast. Fu Shiqin became so annoyed that he took away the breakfast he had brought with him. And this thing too. Gu Weiwei pointed at the present on the table. My brother gave this to you. If you want to return ITT to him, you can do it yourself. Fu Shiqin said and left with the breakfast he had brought with him. Fu Shiqin walked downstairs and banged his head against the steering wheel. His brother had been annoyed by Mu Weiwei going on a blind date and then he and third brother suspected that his spear had rusted, he thought that he might die if he went to work today. He was just feeling troubled when old lady called. Shirchin, have you guys been visiting the apartment and causing trouble to Weiwei? Fu Shirchin suddenly felt that his brain was clicking. So he spoke to his grandma with a very docile tone. Grandma, that is not true. It is just that she and brother are having some trouble, so could you ask her to treat my brother to dinner or go on a stroll or something, so that their relationship can be improved a little bit? How could he ever forget about his grandma? He might not be able to persuade Mu Weiwei, but his grandma would be able to. She had always been obedient towards grandma out of everyone in the entire family. Old lady thought for a moment. Sure, I will go and meet her at school this afternoon. You have to persuade her, otherwise I will not be able to live for long. Fu Shiqin sounded tearful. At Jinxiu compound, Fu Shiqin had just left when Fu Hanjing's assistant, Su Qian, came and knocked on the door with two men carrying two huge paper boxes. Gu Weiwei had thought that Fu Shiqin had returned so the moment she pulled the door open, she said, honestly. Mississippi Mu, good morning. Boss asked me to deliver some deals to you. Su Qian cut straight to the chase. Gu Weiwei was startled for a second, wondering what deal she had with Fu Hanjing. Su Qian entered the room with his men, put down the boxes on the table and moved out the documents inside, one pile after another. Mississippi Mu, this part holds Boss domestic real estate properties and this part contains those of his abroad. Gu Weiwei blinked. What is it going on? Mississippi Mu, if you fancy any of them, you can just sign the procedure contract and it will be yours. And, if you like them all, you can sign them all too. Gu Weiwei asked with eyes upon the documents on the table. Has your boss, gone crazy? Su Qian smiled slightly and continued with his work. These are car keys. All the cars are already parked downstairs in the parking lot. Gu Weiwei frowned as she looked at the rows of car keys on the table. He did go crazy. Finally, Su Qian pulled out a black card, placed it on the table and said, This is boss card. We have spoken to the bank, so you can spend as much as you wish. Gu Weiwei laughed dryly. She really had been offered the house, the car and the money. So, he was really planning to support her as the mistress? And, anything else? Su Qian asked, What else do you need, Mississippi Mu? Something like a contract or an agreement, something to sign with your boss? Gu Weiwei asked. If he was keeping her as a mistress, there should be a contract or something. Since Fu Hanjing did not want to release her, then she could just follow the plan by making use of the Fu family's power so as to stand at the same level as Ling Yan and take back everything she owed her. Su Qian shook his head. Boss has said nothing about it. Gu Weiwei threw a look at the property documents, card keys and black card, wondering what on earth Fu Hanjing was up to. Mississippi Mu, if there is nothing else, I will return to the company. Su Qian bowed slightly and left with his men. Gu Weiwei picked up her phone and called Fu Hanjing. Everything has been delivered? Yes, so when will you be here? Gu Weiwei asked straightforwardly. Fu Hanjing had just arrived at the company and was in the middle of listening to Fu Shiqin reporting his latest work. He sounded a bit distressed and cold. Why should I be there? House, car and money are all here. When you will be here to have s asterisk x with me? Gu Weiwei said in a very standard tone, straightforward and clear. As if she were in a deal with him. I am not going. Fu Hanjing sounded even colder. Then why did you offer me all of these things if it is not because you want to have s asterisk x with me? Gu Weiwei snorted. Because you want them. Fu Hanjing said. Gu Weiwei was startled for a second. Then give me permission to move out. If he could give her whatever she wanted then why didn't he give her permission to move out and stay far away from him? That is not up for discussion. Fu Hanjing said, sounding determined. Gu Weiwei glanced at the stuff on the table. Since the deal has failed, come and take your stuff back. 
Having said those words, she hung up the phone, washed up and went to school to attend the mock examination. Fu Shuqin discovered that after his brother hung up the phone, his already ice-cold face turned even colder. Fu Shuqin felt like crying at that very moment. What on earth had Mu Weiwei said that stimulated his brother so much? How would he be able to spend the rest of the day alive? Having reported his work, Fu Shuqin hurried away to call for help. In Inching High School, Gu Weiwei had just finished the examination for physics. Fu Shuqin's text messages surged in the moment she turned on her phone which had been off for the entire day. Mu Weiwei, what did you say to my brother over the phone? What did you do to my brother? Five more minutes, if you fail to comfort my brother, I will publish a post on Weibo that you have slept with my brother so that every woman in the entire country will tear you apart. The more Gu Weiwei read, the deeper her frown became. Ji Cheng and Luo Qianqian came over to her and complained. Weiwei, we are having our art examination next week, but you have not taught us piano for a long time. Gu Weiwei was just about to go with them when her phone rang again. It was from old lady. Hello, Grandma Fu, what is it going on? Weiwei, I happen to be around your school, has your school dismissed yet? Old lady asked. We have just been dismissed, but I am getting ready to visit my classmates. Before she finished her words, old lady said with heavy breath. I am not feeling very well. Can you come to me right now? Hearing her feeble voice, Gu Weiwei said, I will be right there. She hung up the phone, explained to Ji Qing and Luo Qianqian and then ran out of school with her bag. She quickly found the Fu family's car and got in. Grandma Fu, how are you? Old lady patted her chest, showing a feeble smile. I just took the medicine. I am feeling better now. We really do not need to visit the hospital? Gu Weiwei asked worriedly. If it had not been for old lady, Mu Weiwei would have ended up being on the street and living an unimaginable life. Therefore, even if she was no longer Mu Weiwei, she should still show gratitude to her. Old lady waved her hands and asked the driver to keep on driving before she took her hands and said, I just bought some food and was thinking about visiting you at the apartment. Let's go home together. Gu Weiwei smiled. She had no choice but to go back to the apartment with old lady and help her carry the food upstairs. There are just two of us, but the food seems a bit too much. It is very close to the company, we can ask Hanjing and Shurqin to join us. They have not had a proper meal these past few days because of the international collaboration. Old lady said this as she entered the apartment and took off her coat. Gu Weiwei smiled embarrassedly. Grandma Fu was the help that Fu Shurqin had asked for, right? But she was in her house and it was her grandson she was dealing with. As an outsider, she just couldn't do anything about it. Grandma Fu, put the things down, let me do the cooking. Old lady, however, was busy searching for something in the kitchen whilst saying, no need, call Han Jing and ask him to join us for dinner later. Gu Weiwei brought the phone into the kitchen. Grandma Fu, it would be best if you, make the call. Old lady let out a sigh of relief and pointed at her ears. I am too old to hear words clearly. It would be best if you make the call. Gu Weiwei forced herself to dial Fu Hanjing's number. A few seconds later, the man's low and clear voice arose. I said that I won't be there. Gu Weiwei cleared her throat and said in embarrassment, Grandma Fu is here. She has bought your favorite food. She asked me to ask if you wanted to join us for dinner. There was no answer from Fu Hanjing. He was silent. Gu Weiwei threw a look at old lady and asked one more time. Are you coming or not? Fu Hanjing hesitated for a second and said, I will be there in half an hour. Fu Shuqin watched as his brother's expression became happy before dismissing the meeting after hanging up the phone. The phone calls from this morning had tormented all the staff. And now, one more call soothed his temper. He claimed to never again show up in front of her in the morning and one second after the phone call, he now said that he was going to see her anyways. Women were fickle, but his brother was even more fickle. Half an hour later, the doorbell of Jinxiu compound rang. Gu Weiwei was busy dealing with the seafood when she heard the doorbell ring, making her jolt in surprise and cut her finger. Her finger that was cut open had blood gushing out of it instantaneously. With her teeth biting her lips from the sting, she pulled out a napkin and wrapped up the wound in silence. The moment Fu Hanjing entered the apartment, he noticed the kitchen first. Seeing her holding onto her finger, he went directly to the first aid kit and went over to her. Which finger? Gu Weiwei hesitated for a second. I can do it myself. However, Fu Hanjing had already found the bandage. Show me. Gu Weiwei had to show him her finger and then allowed her finger to be wrapped with the bandage. Old lady, who was resting in the living room, 
looked in the direction of the kitchen in disbelief. Since when, did they get so close? And what was going on with her eldest grandson? Wasn't he so fed up with Weiwei before? But now he looked so concerned about her well-being. Was that really him? Seeing that the wound was wrapped, Gu Weiwei turned back to the sink and was about to deal with the rest of the ingredients. Fu Hanjing took away the knife from her hands as he was standing behind her. Do you want to chop your finger off? I was just being careless, Gu Weiwei said. If he had not come back all of a sudden, she would not have missed the fish. Fu Hanjing took off his coat and passed it to her. Then he unbuttoned his shirt and stood by the sink, dealing with the remaining seafood. Gu Weiwei was startled standing next to him. So this pair of hands, which dealt with business that was worth hundreds of millions of yuan within a few minutes, were dealing with seafood right now? This was really like committing a big sin. Seeing that some water splashing onto him, she put down the coat and fetched a new apron. How about you, put it on? But then, she saw the pink rabbit on the apron, and realized that a cold person like him might not suit this cute clothing style. She was just about to take it away when Fu Hanjing turned around and lowered his head to her. Put it on for me. Gu Weiwei stood on her tiptoes and hung the apron over his neck, then came around to his back and tied it up for him. Done. So this man, who always had an expression of coldness and seriousness, was wearing a gray apron with a pocket which had a pink rabbit on it. That scene was very conflicting yet lovely too. When Fu Hanjing was busy dealing with the ingredients, she did not think that it was proper to stand around doing nothing beside him. So what she did instead was stand by his side, and give him some plates to put things on. She had thought that Fu Hanjing would not have been good at things like this since he never cooked. But it turned out that he was unexpectedly proficient. Within no time, he was done with the seafood. What is the dish? Gu Weiwei said, the fish is for the soup and the rest of the seafood is for the seafood rice. Fu Hanjing nodded. Okay, you give the instructions and I will do it. I can do it myself, go and keep Grandma Fu company. Gu Weiwei said instantly. Your finger is injured. Fu Hanjing refused to accept her suggestion and insisted on staying in the kitchen. Gu Weiwei. She just had a small cut, not missing fingers. She could cook. But she could not drive him away either. So what she did instead was stand by his side and give him instructions on how to make the dishes. There was something weird about what was going on in the kitchen, but it was difficult to figure out what was weird about it. Grandma Fu, who was sitting in the living room, had already been totally distracted from the TV. Instead, she was watching the two people in the kitchen in disbelief. For some reason, she felt grateful that her eldest grandson had found her a granddaughter-in-law. As Fu Shuqin entered the living room and saw the two people in the kitchen, he became dumbfounded. He saw his own brother, who was as lethal as the god of hell, two hours ago in the company, now doing the dishes? He looked gentle like the spring breeze of March and he appeared to be totally different from his usual status. More importantly, they were dressed in couple aprons. His brother had a gray apron with a lovely pink rabbit on the chest and Mu Weiwei, on the other hand, was wearing a pink apron with a gray rabbit on the chest. What, is going on? Fu Shuqin just could not believe what he was seeing. Is your brother courting Weiwei? Old lady asked with a whisper. Fu Shuqin nodded, it was so obvious that he was courting Mu Weiwei. But why had he driven her out if he was choosing to court her now? He disliked her before, but now he had turned it around so as to court her instead. What on earth was his brother doing? To have acted as an indifferent man before and now was trying to court the same girl, with difficulty? He denied that he was unhappy because of Mu Weiwei at lunchtime but she just made a small call and now he was here. Why had he not discovered before that his brother was so inwardly irritable? In the kitchen, Gu Weiwei helped to serve the dishes whilst Fu Hanjing was making the food. He had his eyes upon this busy girl constantly in his gaze, that was full of coldness before was now full of sweetness and smiles, harboring a strong sense of possession. He made up his mind to have this girl for himself. Soon the dinner was on the table and most of the dishes were made by Fu Hanjing under the direction of Gu Weiwei. Fu Shuqin could not wait to taste the seafood rice he had been drooling after for a long time, and the juicy, salty rice turned out to be so delicious that he almost burst into tears of excitement. He was just in the middle of dinner, when his brother pinched one large shrimp with his chopsticks and gave one to him and one to old lady. Fu Shuqin looked up in astonishment. He had been eating with his brother at the same table for almost two decades and it was the first time for him to do such a thing. He was just in the middle of feeling moved by his brother's behavior, when he saw his brother removing the shells of the shrimps, mussels and scallops. Then, he gave all of them to Gu Weiwei. He was even on the verge of feeding her. 
Having received so much seafood, Gu Weiwei, out of politeness, gave some scallops back to him in return. Help yourself, you don't need to help me. Grandma Fu became very pleased inwardly as she saw what was happening. This cold-hearted grandson had finally understood what he ought to do in a relationship. They were just eating when Fu Hanjing's phone rang. He stood up to answer it, and his joyful face turned cold, instantly. The company does not have an obligation to deal with an employee's personal matters. Manager Meng is just an employee and we have nothing to do with each other. Don't misunderstand us and do not do anything that would cause a misunderstanding amongst others. Gu Weiwei threw a look towards him and could tell that it must have been Mrs. Fu who had called him. She must have asked him to deal with the MG incident involving Meng Ruya. However, Meng Ruya had told her before that Fu Hanjing had helped her and the Meng family to settle many problems and he never once rejected her request. But what was going on today, so that he refused his own mother? Fu Hanjing could tell that she was looking at him, so he threw a sideways glance at her and said, I will organize a meeting with you two later. Fu Shuqin could not help but take a look at Mu Weiwei when he heard those words. What that meant was that he was bringing her back home for them to meet each other. And when he said that he did not want any misunderstandings, he probably meant that he did not want any misunderstandings with her. Fu Hanjing took a seat after he ended the call and casually asked, You had a problem with the Meng family the other day? Yes, we had a fight. I ruined Mrs. Meng's branded bag and should have compensated her for it. But MG's customer service said that the bag was not officially sold by them or the private designer, Martin Green. So they will probably ask Mrs. Meng to compensate them instead, Gu Weiwei said calmly. You were not bullied? Fu Hanjing asked. Of course not, I am never bullied. Gu Weiwei smiled brightly and said with pride. Fu Hanjing nodded calmly, then all is well. Fu Shuqin looked very disdainfully at his own brother. Oh well, it did not matter how the others were doing as long as she was fine, right? After dinner, Fu Shuqin saw old lady into the car and then went into the study to answer some calls about work. He became a bit depressed when he saw the unopened presents on the table. After the phone call ended, he ripped open the wrapping paper on the presents and took out the ruby necklaces within. Gu Weiwei was just doing the dishes, when she saw a necklace dropping down from above her head. Before she realized what was going on, she already had a necklace around her neck. Her beautiful, jade-like skin made the ruby look very radiant. You look very beautiful with it on you, thank you for, dinner. Gu Weiwei lowered her head and was about to take it off when Fu Hanjin caught hold of her hands. I don't want it. She had spent so much time in the Gu family and witnessed all kinds of luxurious goods, so she could tell how expensive this ruby was with one glance. This is a very precious ruby from Beland and when a man sees his beloved girl, he will give her this type of ruby, to ask her to spend the rest of her life with him. Fu Hanjing's black and profound eyes were full of love and his voice sounded charming and lustful. Gu Weiwei blinked. So, this is a confession? She was just thinking about how she should get rid of this necklace when Fu Hanjing lowered his head and kissed her on the forehead. We are going now. Sleep soon. Wait. Before Gu Weiwei could take off the necklace, Fu Hanjing had already left with Fu Shuqin. When Gu Weiwei removed the necklace, the man was already gone. She looked a bit distressed as she saw the ruby necklace in her hands. The place where this kind of ruby was produced in Beland used to belong to someone who fell in love with a girl that was about to marry into the royal family. This ruby was used to ask for the girl's hand in marriage. Eventually, the owner managed to marry his beloved girl and they spent the rest of their lives together. Therefore, the nobilities of Beland regarded this ruby as a symbol of love. A couple of years ago, Gu Siding gave one such ruby necklace to her too. This romantic symbolized ruby did not bring them together. When she died and was reborn again, she came over to Fu Hanjing's side instead, the Gu family's worst enemy. He, however, gave Ling Yen her heart and their affairs were known everywhere, like rumors. At the Li family, Li Xing'er visited her home when she was free, and Zhou Meiqin's brother, Zhou Hong, and his wife Wang Fun were also together at the Li family home. They had a large table of food ready so as to celebrate Li Xing'er's new role in the movie together with Zhou Meiqin and Li Jiaqing as well as the successful collaboration between Longxing Enterprise and Tianxing Enterprise. Zhou Meiqin was out on business for a couple of days and Wang Fen greeted her by offering her the newly braised soup. Sister, you left in a hurry, everyone is waiting for you. Why? Zhou Meiqin snorted. Mu Weiwei, the B asterisk TCH, has gotten Xing or such important movie resources so that we now have a large collaboration agreement. We have to celebrate. Wang Fen said with a smile. 
Zhou Hong was at Longxing too, and he was the one responsible for this project. She of course was very happy to see this collaboration finalized. That bitch even humiliated Lina at school. When the school and the teachers know what she is up to, she won't be able to stay at school anymore. Enough. Zhou Meiqin smashed down the bowl of soup and glared at Wang Fen. None of you must spill this matter. Anyone who does, will die. Why not? President Wang will not betray us. Wang Weidong loses interest in old things very easily and soon he will be tired of her. I told you not to say anything or you can get out of here. Zhou Meiqin said with clenched teeth. Because that night, Wang Weidong was not ruining Mu Weiwei but herself. She did not dare to tell anyone about being injured, so she was outside of her home for a couple of days. But now, when she came home, her family said that they were celebrating the successful deal, acquired from her being ruined by that old scumbag? Wang Fen and Zhou Lina exchanged a look, knowing that it was not wise to offend her, she said, okay, we will keep it sealed. Why are you defending the girl? She has been with President Wang, what does it hurt to cause some rumors? The old lady said as she walked out of the kitchen seeing Zhou Meiqin getting furious for no reason. Mu Longxing had wanted to give the company to that B asterisk TCH, but it was a company built by her son, but she still turned out to be the heir in the end. Horrible. But God was wise enough to kill Mu Longxing and Mu Yao, so that this little B asterisk TCH was left alone with just a pretty face. Yeah, mom, why are you defending Mu Weiwei? Li Xing'er was confused too. Furious and angry, Zhou Meiqin said with gritted teeth, President Wang's wife is a very intimidating woman. The deal has just been signed and there are many things to work on with Tianxing later. If President Wang's wife knows about it, the deal may be off. Also, Xinger has a long way to go in the film industry. If the matter gets spread around and paparazzi know about it, then it will be very bad for all of us. What is the point of not keeping the secret? When old lady heard about the seriousness of this affair, she nodded with agreement, yes, we must keep it secret, or we will be in trouble. Keep your mouth sealed. Don't cause me any trouble. Zhou Meiqin warned everyone there. It had been she who slept with Wang Weidong the other night and Mu Weiwei had also taken pictures of them. If the rumors came out, they might have vented their anger, but if Mu Weiwei became annoyed, she would publicize the pictures and she would be doomed. So no one was allowed to speak of this matter before she caught her and took hold of those pictures. Otherwise, she, as the deputy president of Longxing Enterprise, would be a laughing stock in front of everyone and Li Jiaqing would not stay with her, no matter how much he might love her. What was more, old lady had been angry at her for giving birth to two daughters, instead of a son for the Li family and a divorce would definitely happen if this matter was revealed. I see, I see. Wang Fen promised an understanding. Xing'er, you must act well when the role is given you and do your best to get the Gold Phoenix Award, otherwise. Otherwise she would have been humiliated in vain. Don't worry, mom. Li Xing'er took hold of her arm and said with confidence. I will definitely get the Gold Phoenix Award and you will be invited to attend the ceremony with me. You will watch me with your own eyes as I receive the award and become the youngest movie queen in the whole field. She had spent only two years gathering the popularity that others would need six or seven years to achieve but a TV series actress would not find it easy to become a movie actress. When she was given the opportunity, she would definitely not miss it. Only by being famous would she be able to find a position for herself in the industry. Hearing what her daughter said, Zhou Meiqin became slightly pleased. Then prepare yourself and shine brightly in your first movie. I know. Let's eat then. Here are your favorite dishes. You are the hero of the family. Li Xing'er walked into the living room with Zhou Meiqin's arms linked with hers. Zhou Meiqin had not been in the mood to have a celebration party with them, but she tried to calm herself down and share the meal with her daughter who rarely visited home. She had just sat down and was about to reach out for the chopsticks, when her phone rang. The caller was President Wang Weidong. Help yourselves, I need to answer a call in the study. Zhou Meiqin looked cold, picked up the phone and went upstairs. After she went upstairs, she locked the door of the study and answered Wang Weidong's phone, did you find the B asterisk TCH or not? Not yet. Wang Weidong smiled sinisterly and said, What about, meeting and talking? He liked tender young girls, but he found it very exciting to have slept with someone else's wife. What was more, Zhou Meiqin had been in great shape and when she got H asterisk RNY, she could be more stimulating than other unexperienced girls. There is no need for us to meet. Zhou Meiqin was so furious that she trembled when she heard what he intendingly suggested. Mrs. Lee, one night can lead to much affection. We are not a couple, 
But we have been through one night of fun together, Wang Weidong said with a smile, sounding obviously like a dandy. Wang Weidong, you better catch that B asterisk TCH as soon as possible, otherwise it will be bad for both of us. Zhou Meiqin was disgusted, but she had to talk with him because Mu Weiwei was not captured yet. What are you afraid of? Can't I be better than Li Juching? Wang Weidong still sounded dandy. President Wang, if your wife and your father-in-law know about it, do you think that you can still survive in Tianqing? Zhou Meiqin warned with gritted teeth. If I am not doing well, you won't be either. Wang Weidong had to change his tone when he heard her threat. The reason why he became the president of Tianqing was only because he married the daughter of the top director. If this affair was revealed, he would no longer be accepted in the family anymore. Strangely enough, I have sent out several groups of people to find the B asterisk TCH. She has still not been found and my men either quit or disappear. Wang Weidong thought for a moment and asked, Do you think that this little bitch has sought refuge from someone? No way. Mu Longxing and Mu Yao are both gone, and she has no refuge at all. It must be your incapable men who could not even catch an 18-year-old girl. Zhou Meiqin wanted very much to flay Mu Weiwei alive when she thought of the insult she went through the other night. Hearing her disbelief, Wang Weidong said seriously, something is wrong this time. My men should have caught hold of this girl already. Someone must have helped her on the sly, otherwise those men would not have quit and left the capital when they were so well paid. Impossible. Who can she turn to? Zhou Meiqin thought for a while, failing to figure out who might have helped Mu Weiwei. But Mu Weiwei who set them up the other day at the hotel did turn out to be different from the innocent girl she had known before. She still had the pictures of her, and if she was not found and the pictures were not reclaimed, she would not be assured. She spent great amounts of energy and time just to get to where she was today, and she must not be ruined by that bitch. No one leaks a single thing when they quit. Apparently, the opposite party is someone powerful. Don't get me involved with anyone with power because of this stupid matter, Wang Weidong warned with a cold voice. He might be obsessed with girls, but he was not stupid. It was not a normal thing that his men were unable to catch a young girl. Therefore, someone else must have gotten involved. She is just a young girl, who do you think she can find as a refuge? If she had found someone, that person would have stepped forward for her. Zhou Meiqin was just talking when someone knocked at the door. She lowered her voice and said, find some reliable people. I can pay them well. She was not going to forgive this B asterisk TCH who had insulted her so much. The three-day practice examination finally came to an end. Gu Weiwei had just walked out of the classroom and switched on her cell phone when Fu Hanjing rang. She looked around and picked it up somewhere less populous. What is it, Mr. Fu? Your examination is finished? Yes. What time are you coming home? I am getting ready for the artistic examination and I will be home late. Gu Weiwei answered. Honestly speaking, she was not that willing to meet him. The meal they had had last time almost made her faint. Okay, see you tonight. Fu Hanjing said and rang off. Tonight? Gu Weiwei really had the impulse to smash her cell phone. Didn't he just say that he never visited this place often? What did he mean by dropping by so often? They were not living together. Weiwei. Ji Cheng and Luo Qianqian came over to her and stopped on either side of her. I have talked with the teacher and the classmates of the dance classroom, you can practice with us. Luo Qianqian gave her a paper bag. Here are your dresses and shoes. Thank you, you two are so sweet. Gu Weiwei said gratefully as she glanced at her two friends. There were just a few weeks left before the artistic examination of the film academy took place. Apart from the music and line speaking, dancing was also requested as well. After the test, she was going to attend a film audition. It was a martial arts film that required a great deal of martial arts practice. So she needed to get herself exercising again, so as to be able to face the test and audition in her best form. She could do some leg stretching at the apartment, but it was not enough to practice bigger moves. So she had to practice with the students of the dance class. I hope you can be accepted by the academy and become a famous star, so I can cling on to you. Ji Ching said childishly as she saw the large-sized poster of Zhou Lina on the wall. She lost the battle against you in piano playing, so she turned to an album company for some soul performance. How blind could those people have been? Don't care about others. Get yourself prepared for the test. Gu Weiwei said, as she walked into the changing room next to the dance classroom to put on the dance dress and shoes. The students were practicing ballet, which was what she was good at. So she practiced with them. 
Ji Cheng and Luo Qianqian studied in the corner of the classroom as they were waiting for her and not participating. Most of the students were Ji Cheng and Luo Qianqian's friends, so they were friendly towards her. Soon, they started to have conversations with each other. They were just focusing on the dances for the test when the deputy principal, Yi Mei the music teacher and Zhou Lina showed up. Ms. Lu, Lina's new song will have a music video which will be filmed at the school. We need some students to dance for her. Get some of your students here for the practice. It should be a wonderful opportunity. Principal, Ms. Yi, the test is next month and we are running out of time to practice. We don't care if you have an MV on or not. One girl rejected immediately when she heard the request. She had never liked Zhou Lina after all. Dressed in an elegant, purple dress, Zhou Lina had her hair over her shoulders and said as she came into the classroom, you won't do it in vain. After the MV is shown, you will benefit from it too, right? Zhu Xiaoqin and Zhou Lina's fans could not help but speak up when they saw the girls giving up on the opportunity of performing for Zhou Lina. It is good for you to dance for Lina. Don't overestimate yourself. When Lina's song is aired, you will also become popular. Hee <laughs> hee. Ji Cheng closed her books and went over to Zhou Lina and her group. Zhou Lina, have you forgotten about being defeated in Few Follets No. 5? What about resuming the battle you escaped from last time? Hearing Few Follets No. 5, that almost ruined her reputation, Zhou Lina glanced around the classroom. Sure enough she saw Mu Weiwei, who was stretching her legs, and suddenly felt annoyed. Hearing Ji Cheng's provocative words, Zhu Xiaoqin snorted. Lina was in a hurry for her TV program. Of course she can play the piano. What are you being so proud of? All right then, you were in a hurry then, but you are not now. Ji Ching stared at Zhou Lina with arms crossed over her chest and said provocatively, so play it now to see if you are capable or not. She had been trembling in fear back then and now she claimed that she couldn't play it because the program needed her. Yi Mei instantly distracted everyone by saying, anyway, Lina is here for the dancers. Lina has also hired her cousin who is from the Capital Ballet Troupe for practice. It is a great opportunity for you girls too. After that day, Lina had been practicing Few Follets No. 5 at home. But she was never able to do it. The deputy principal followed. We may need this classroom for practice and filming. If you are to agree, you will not only be able to practice but also perform in an MV, how wonderful is this? You need this classroom? Ms. Lu said as she threw a look at the teachers. They have tests next month and they are running out of time already. Where would they be able to practice if you take over their classroom? Then you can go home to practice if you are not willing to stay. Zhu Xiaoqin said proudly as she stood next to Zhou Lina. Lina was the ambassador of Inching High School and of course she should be prioritized. This is a dance classroom, not a music classroom, nor Zhou Lina's home either. Why must we listen to your orders? Ji Cheng was very annoyed when she saw the principal and teacher who were treating Zhou Lina like a princess. Then sign with a company like Lina has. Or leave. Zhu Xiaoqin of course was sucking up to Zhou Lina as her best friend. All the students became very annoyed. They had been learning dance for two or three years now, just for the test next week, and now at this crucial moment, they were being driven out of their classroom. My cousin Jing Yuan will soon become the chief dancer of the Capital Ballet Troupe. It is your honor to learn from her. She will perform with the troupe next month abroad. Zhou Lina glanced at the students in the classroom with pride. It is not a chance that is available to everyone. The new song was about dreams, and she needed a group of young dancers to dance for her, full of vim and activeness, so ballet dancers were an important element for the mixture, with modern dancers. The company said that the schoolgirls could be used and when the song was made, it could even become a promoting theme song for Inching High School. But these people were rejecting the opportunity. How stupid. Having said those words, Zhou Lina saw a very innocent-looking young girl coming into the classroom. She waved at Zhou Lina. Lina. Sister Yuan, here you are. Zhou Lina hugged the girl and introduced her to everyone in the classroom proudly. This sister Zhang Yuan, the upcoming chief dancer at the Capital Ballet Troupe. She will go to the Royal Ballet Troupe in the UK next month. To be her student is not an opportunity that is available for everyone. Some unpleasant memories emerged inside her head when Gu Weiwei saw Jing Yuan coming in. Jing Yuan was Mu Weiwei's cousin too. She was the daughter of Li Jiaqing's sister, and she was very competitive. Mu Weiwei had been a gifted child in music and dance, and she had learned ballet together with Jing Yuan during their childhood. There was a very important dancing competition years back and Mu Weiwei had had the chance of winning. But Jing Yuan did something to Mu Weiwei's dancing shoes so that Mu Weiwei's feet became injured. 
Jing Yuan won the championship for that competition and entered the capital ballet troupe and rose to where she was now. She would always take whatever was given to Mu Weiwei and she would ruin whatever she could not take from her. She did not want Mu Weiwei to have whatever she could not have, she also took away Wei Ziki's boyfriend, and Wei Ziki was Mu Weiwei's good friend. Wei Ziki became so sad that she went away, abroad, and hadn't contacted Mu Weiwei for months. Be our teacher? Gu Weiwei let out a cold laugh, are you sure you are capable? Hearing her voice, Jing Yuan smiled at her disdainfully. At least capable enough to be your teacher. Mu Weiwei was indeed gifted, but after she had hurt her feet, she lost track of practicing ballet. Whilst, on the other hand, Jing Yuan entered the top ballet troupe and had become much more capable than she was already. Mu Weiwei, if you are not convinced, then compete with Sister Yuan. You have learned ballet before, haven't you? Zhou Lina taunted. She knew pretty well that it was years ago that Mu Weiwei learned ballet and that she had stopped dancing ballet after she went to learn folk dance. Jing Yuan glanced at Gu Weiwei and the other students of the dance class proudly. There is no need for a competition. I am a professional dancer, which she is not, it may look bad if I am seen competing with her. Ji Qing clenched her teeth out of anger and snorted. Weiwei is a pianist, not a dancer. You can compete with her playing piano if you want to. How shameless she was to use her professional skills to win the battle. Didn't she say that she is not capable enough to teach her? But now she, herself, does not want to compete anymore? Zhu Xiaoqin and others belonging to Zhou Lina's firm fans sneered. Gu Weiwei showed a very cold smile. She was going to take revenge for Mu Weiwei. All right then, let's compete. Weiwei. Luo Qianqian approached and tried to talk with her with a whisper. You are not a professional, and you are not in an advantageous position. That girl was capable, especially since she was with the Capital Ballet Troupe and the Royal Ballet Troupe. It is okay, I have taught myself. Gu Weiwei gave an assuring look to her and Ji Qing. Zhou Lina did not expect for her to agree to do the competition. Mu Weiwei, don't ever think that Sister Zhang Yuan is bullying you when you yourself have agreed to this battle. If you lose, get out of this classroom. Gu Weiwei said with a cold voice. Hearing these words, Zhu Xiaoqin said, If you lose, you must become Lina's assistant for a month and our slave. They still held a grudge against her from when she stood out in the piano competition last time. They would not miss the chance to stamp on her when it came their way. Yi Mei suddenly came up with another idea. She stepped out and said, If you two really want to do a competition, then let's do online voting. We will see who has more votes. Lina's new single would be out soon and this contest would help her to gain some popularity. When the contest was finished, then Jing Yuan, the chief dancer of the Capital Ballet Troupe, could be announced as the choreographer. In this way, the popularity of this MV that was being released next month would be guaranteed. Zhou Lina understood that Yi Mei was trying to cook up the story online, so she did not object to the idea. I will call my agent and they can do something about it. Yi Mei nodded and continued. If it's possible, your cousin can write a Weibo post before the streaming starts. You can open the scene by playing the piano and then Jing Yuan can enter. You and Jing Yuan have fans, and when Li Xing'er reposts the Weibo announcement, we will definitely be at the top of the headlines. As for Mu Weiwei, she was just a tool for them to use to cook up the story. I get it. I will tell my cousin. Zhou Lina said. Yi Mei and the deputy principal talked about their plan and then made an announcement. If it is a competition, then we will hold it in the main hall in two hours. We will use online voting and if you lose, you must spare the classroom for Zhou Lina to make her MV and dance practice. Gu Weiwei answered. Okay. I have no objections. Jing Yuan squinted at Gu Weiwei and looked at her with a sneer and disdain. Stupid. If she was asking for the trouble, then she would spare no efforts to give it to her. Zhou Lina and Jing Yuan's team went out of the classroom to prepare for the contest two hours later. Luo Qianqian and Ji Qing surrounded Gu Weiwei who was doing the leg exercises and said, Weiwei, they are making use of you to cook up a story. Why do you still want to compete with her? I have some revenge to execute. This contest is unfair. Do you really want to be Zhou Lina's assistant and be their slave? Luo Qianqian was angry and talked impulsively. Zhou Lina had just won the championship and she had acquired fans. So had Jing Yuan. Mu Weiwei was just an unknown student and voting was definitely not going to work in her favor. Also, it seemed that their agents would do something about that behind the scenes too. It was not a fair competition or voting system. Also, she was self-taught and she could not compete with Jing Yuan who was a professional. Can't you be confident? 
Gu Weiwei questioned, as she did a very elegant and beautiful spin on point. Ji Qin was startled by her move, but she was still not assured. They are in charge of the voting and you won't beat her in votes, even if you are capable. Jing Yuan almost ruined my foot. I have to take revenge. Gu Weiwei answered. What? Ji Qing instantly became furious. Luo Qianqian thought for a while and said, Try your best, we can come up with a way to equal out the voting. Ji Qing looked at Luo Qianqian and said, What do you have in mind? You don't need to worry about that. Now, get her the best ballet dress and put on the most dazzling makeup for her. I will take care of the rest. Luo Qianqian said as she walked away mysteriously. Ji Qing sat down by Gu Weiwei who was stretching her legs and sighed. Let's do it. If we lose, I will be Zhou's slave together with you. I can swear her to death. Gu Weiwei smiled as she looked at Ji Qing. She used to share everything good with Ling Yan. But Ling Yan took away everything from her and her heart, just because she wanted to survive. Ji Qing and Luo Qianqian had only known her for a short while and she had done nothing for them, yet they took her side each time she encountered trouble. Cheng, thank you. Two hours later, there were many students gathered in the school hall for the show. In order to get a better outcome in the live streaming, the principal and the company that signed Zhou Lina hired professionals to do the live stream. Zhou Lina and Jing Yuan had already started to pull the poll on Weibo, so the first group of viewers turned out to be their fans. Before Jing Yuan and Gu Weiwei started the dance competition, Zhou Lina first played a solo performance, gaining a great deal of attention in the live stream. Isn't that the champion of the youth music contest? She is pretty and talented, she is a real goddess. Goddess Lina is showing off her performance again. After Zhou Lina finished the performance, she bowed to the public, looking elegant and generous. Thank you for coming to today's live stream. We are going to film an MV, so we have invited Jing Yuan from the Capital Ballet Troupe for the choreography. But someone is not very convinced by Ms. Jing Yuan's skills, so today, they are going to have a contest here. You can all vote here in the live stream. Instantly, comments flooded out. Wow, Goddess Lina is going to have a new solo song. How wonderful. Jing Yuan entered the Capital Ballet troupe at the age of 12, and someone is not convinced. We will see how Goddess Jing gives that person a lesson. Which B asterisk TCH is not convinced. The live stream was dominated by Zhou Lina and Jing Yuan's fans, and only a few of them were from the general public, so all the instant messages were for Zhou Lina. At the backstage of the hall, Jing Yuan was dressed in a white ballet dress with an exquisite crown on top of her head. She walked in with her back straight, looking like nobility. Zhu Xiaoqin was waiting for Zhou Lina backstage where only Ji Qing was. She sneered. The contest is happening soon, where is Mu Weiwei? Weiwei is making preparations. She will be here soon. Ji Qing snorted. Actually, she was inwardly very worried. Most of the audience were Zhou Lina's supporters and she also noticed that Zhou Lina and Jing Yuan's fans had dominated the live stream. Although she had already asked some of her friends to vote, the number was so small compared to that of Jing Yuan's army. I think that she is too afraid to come, Zhu Xiaoqin said proudly. She might have stood out in the piano performance last time, but she would not make it in the dancing competition. She was not a versatile genius. I do remember that someone was also scared by Fu Follett's number 5, right? Ji Qing snapped back without sparing any mercy. Zhu Xiaoqin had a look at Jing Yuan who was making preparations. She was not at all worried that she would lose. She will lose no matter whether she is coming or not. Tell her to get ready to be the assistant. Mu Weiwei was definitely going to suffer a great deal. They two were still arguing when Zhou Lina entered backstage after playing the song. She said to Jing Yuan with a bright smile, Sister Yuan, are you ready? Jing Yuan nodded as she glanced at Ji Qing and sneered. It seems that someone is too afraid to come. Whether she is here or not, Sister Yuan, you will have to finish the performance. Everyone is watching you from the live stream. Jing Yuan adjusted the hem of her white dress, walked to the front stage, gently. She was elegant just like a swan princess. She had been practicing for a long time with the ballet troupe and she was almost as outstanding as the current chief dancer, on and off the stage. What could Mu Weiwei do anyways? At the front stage of the hall, applause arose the moment Jing Yuan went on stage. Jing Yuan danced elegantly and proficiently with the music. She was presenting the excellent dancing skills she had gained in the past years at the Capital Ballet Troupe, looking so pretty just like a white swan. The instant comments on the live stream covered the entire screen. Who is not convinced by this skill? Let's all swear at the unconvinced B asterisk TCH. 
Vote for the White Swan. Vote for Goddess Jing. Jing Yuan's votes were rising rapidly and within a couple of minutes, the total number had exceeded 10,000. Backstage, Zhou Lina and Zhu Xiaoqin showed a proud smile when they watched the poll going up. 50,000 now. It's still rising. Where is Mu Weiwei? Is she coming or not? Zhou Lina asked sneeringly. Having said those words, she saw Gu Weiwei and Luo Qianqian as well as the girls from the dance class walking into backstage. She was dressed in a black ballet dance dress, wearing very thick eye makeup and looking sinisterly beautiful. Mu Weiwei, you truly don't have to be dressed like a ghost to become the loser. Zhu Xiaoqin sized her up and then sneered. Gu Weiwei ignored her, walked over to Ji Qing and adjusted herself by breathing hard, waiting for her turn. Ji Qing glanced at Luo Qianqian and said, Jing Yuan has gotten more than 60,000 votes. And it is still rising. Luo Qianqian looked serious. They are cooking up a story, of course Jing Yuan gets a lot of votes. Zhou Lina spoke for Jing Yuan when she was on the stage, and Jing Yuan was the first performer too. When the public saw her capability, of course she would get votes from them as well. So there were not that many votes left for Mu Weiwei later on. What was more, the white swan had always been and adored as a symbol of beauty and purity. She was dressed, however, as a black swan, which was not that popular at all. After the girls from dance class heard this, they whispered. I have asked my family and friends to vote for black swan, but that is still very little. Luo Qianqian looked at Gu Weiwei with worry. At this moment, Yi Mei spoke to her when she glanced at the front stage again, Mu Weiwei, Jing Yuan's solo is done now. Your turn. Gu Weiwei adjusted her neck and smiled at Ji Qing and Luo Qianqian as she walked onto the stage of the hall. On the stage, Jing Yuan had already performed an extremely beautiful dance as a white swan, gaining much applause. Gu Weiwei spun beautifully into the center of the stage as she raised up her arms and straightened her back. Unlike the white swan, Jing Yuan, she looked intimidating like a queen. Like a black swan. Some of the public, who belonged neither to Jing Yuan nor Zhou Lina voted for the black swan immediately. Although the vote was not rising as fast as that of Jing Yuan's, it was still constantly rising. Ji Qing gasped as she watched Gu Weiwei from the phone. She was not any worse than Jing Yuan at all. I like the goddess's hands and now I have fallen for her legs too. Standing next to her, Luo Qianqian turned on WeChat and copied the link to a friend. Then she texted, raise the votes for Black Swan from your live stream. The text back showed, honestly, I am doing a live stream. Luo Qianqian answered, one more minute, or I will expose the picture of you in dresses. One minute later, the voting for Gu Weiwei arose tremendously as the audience emerged into the live streaming room. Ji Qing glared at Zhou Lina provocatively and said, you aren't the only person who knows how to get votes. However, Gu Weiwei's vote still could not catch up with Jing Yuan's. Jing Yuan's vote suddenly rose by 10,000, whilst Gu Weiwei's was almost on the verge of ceasing altogether.